Hi, I'm Melissa Maker, and I'm here to talk to you about very important things. Kicking excuses to the curb and getting things done? Now that's important. Stay tuned to the end where I will share one fun fact about me, and remember to subscribe to my eponymous channel to see even more important things. If you haven't already, please watch the first video in this three-part series on fears that fuel procrastination. It'll provide you a lot of context for this video and the next one. We talked about fears last time and how they can freeze us dead in our tracks and prevent us from doing things that are meaningful in our lives, starting businesses, leaving jobs to try something new, or making other exciting change. Fears lead to excuses or reasons as to why we can easily put off pursuing what we truly want. Let's dig into some of these common excuses that I hear and ones that I've used myself. In my experience, when I examine excuses, I can often see how I'm getting in my own way with a fabrication that's preventing me from my own success. When you utter an excuse, you're giving yourself yet another reason not to succeed. Here are some common ones. Number one, I'm not sure it'll even work, so why bother? If it's working elsewhere, it's likely going to work if you put your mind to it. There's a chance it won't work, but there's a chance it will. Also, if people didn't chance things, we wouldn't have light bulbs, electric cars, kombucha, lipstick, and all sorts of other modern day inventions. You've got to try something, and if it doesn't work, you tweak it. Believing in your idea, believing in yourself, and your ability to make something work, that will get you where you need to be. Second, I know I should, I just haven't found the time. Uh-huh. You know, there are some very busy people in the world who make time for many things. And don't even tell me that they have people because, yeah, they have people, but they didn't always have people and they didn't become super powerful, successful, or important because they had legions of people helping them since birth. You work hard, you make time for what's important, and eventually you'll be able to outsource the things that are taking up your productive time as well. You can make time for anything if you make it important to you. You can also look at what's eating up your time and find ways to change that. For example, I don't play games on my phone anymore because I know that when I do, I can spend an hour a day just wasting my otherwise productive hours playing games. This doesn't just apply to work. I'm a super busy person, but I make time for things that are important to me, like spending time with my daughter each day, having date night with my husband, going out for coffee with my friends, and I'm even doing an improv class right now. Third, I can't do that and manage things with my current job. I still need to make money. No problem, adapt your schedule. Go down to part-time at work, Switch shifts to evening hours, telecommute, find a way to job share. There are lots of options. You can still earn money and start a side pursuit or enhance your education. In fact, that's how Chad and I grew our businesses. I started the cleaning service in 2006 while I waitressed at nights. During the day, I was able to clean and do admin work. When our YouTube channel took off, Chad went down to part-time at his corporate job. He was a marketing executive and his boss understood what he needed and allowed him to adapt his schedule and take a pay cut. We did all of this because we wanted to make it work. We didn't want excuses. If you're forthcoming with your boss, they'll likely want to help you succeed and make accommodations for you. If they won't, you can look for another role that will allow you the flexibility to support your goal. If you don't do this for you, no one else will. You've got to advocate for yourself. Four, it was easy for so-and-so because they were lucky. The luck argument is insulting. Please never tell anyone who's super successful that they're lucky. It kicks dirt in the face of someone who's worked really hard to get to where they are. And when you're really successful one day, you won't want to hear it either. I can't deny that some luck comes into play for people, but it's not all luck all the time. Anyone who's successful has had to work hard at it, day in and day out. We all have certain cards that we've been dealt, and the idea here is to find ways to leverage the crap out of the good ones and find workarounds for the bad one. I had a professor that used to say, chance favors the prepared mind. In other words, if you work hard, you get lucky. Perhaps that saying has an undertone of, if you don't put the work in, luck can't find you. There are about a million other excuses I've heard and will continue to hear. Excuses are not tools that successful people use. They're tools that people who are stuck or scared use. 
If you hear yourself making excuses as to why you aren't successful or why you haven't pursued something special or meaningful, bust them open and see what's really behind them. Ask yourself if the origin story of your excuse is true or a front for a fear. I imagine it's going to be the latter. More than anything, remember that if you want, you can make it happen. Sure, you've got to put the work in, but people have overcome incredible obstacles to get to where they are today. It is hard work, but it's rewarding, exciting, a little scary, and of course, very fun to share. I hope you found this video helpful, and please tune into the final video in this series where I'll talk about risks and why we use them to procrastinate, and of course, how to overcome that. I'd love to know in the comments what excuses are holding you back from doing the next big thing in your life. And please also let me know what other videos you'd like to see more of. I'm trying to be more business and motivation focused for the next little while, so any ideas would really help. And here's that fun fact about me. I went to overnight camp for many years and wanted to be invited back for the counselor in training program with all of my friends. I wasn't invited back because my counselors agreed I was too messy and unwilling to help my cabin mates clean and that I wouldn't make a good counselor. Ouch. Please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay on top of very important things. Until next time, remember, you got this.